Hello, good morning everyone. I'm Fitra, your host for today. Oh, so you're new. Yes, I'm new. This yeah, is my first time. You, haven't seen you before. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our weekly Facebook and YouTube live. Do follow us on our social media, on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and subscribe to our uh, YouTube as well, Capital we, Dynamics. Do we have TikTok? Yeah, we have yeah. TikTok also. Okay, okay, so yes. don't forget to follow us on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell on the YouTube so that you won't miss our latest updates. And we also have LinkedIn, right? Yes, okay. that's true. So before we get straight into the topics, if you have any questions, comments, or you want to share your thoughts, on our current uh, topic that we are discussing, feel free to comment down below too so that we'll know. Mm. And if you are watching on replay, don't forget to add hashtag replay for Capital Dynamics. So today, we will be discussing a very interesting topic with <laughs> the one and only Teng Wu, our speaker for today. Welcome, Teng Wu. How are you today? Yeah, okay, all right, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> The weather is good, so I'm yeah, weather is good, yeah. I'm so excited today. It's not uh, I mean outside the temperature I think it's about 25, 26 yeah. degrees, yeah. It's very comfortable. Yeah, very comfortable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So before we jump into the topics, actually I have some mm. quick question to ask the audience. Mm. Like related to our current discussion, mm. which are you guys planning to migrate from Malaysia? <laughs> <laughs> if you did like where you want to go where yeah. you you planning yeah. to live yeah. just share your thoughts with yeah. us yeah. and so thank you you have a broad experience and exposure mm. and for sure mm. it will influence your perspective on how you perceive the world mm. and then the big question is that why you haven't why you are not migrating from Malaysia mm. okay I, I the reason why we uh Put this topic mm -hmm. today this morning is because that question has been asked i've been asked this question many times mm -hmm. right and i guess in my situation a lot of people would see that factually it's actually very easy for me to migrate uh, if i want to migrate to australia singapore us hong kong or uk mm -hmm. uh, I think for all these countries, uh, I, I qualify, right? I mean, Hong Kong, we have got business there. Singapore, we have mm -hmm. businesses. Uh, Australia, we have businesses and so on. So compared with a lot of other people, uh, it's a lot easier. Uh, it's much easier for me to, to migrate in this kind of places. Of course, if you're asking me whether I'm able to migrate to mm -hmm. Russia or Ukraine and, and yeah. I mean, that's out of the radar. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Right? But just just to throw back, mm -hmm. uh, you Malaysian, right? Yeah. You're born in Malaysia. Right? Do you ever think of migrating from Malaysia? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Seriously? We did once. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Wow. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. What the whole family? Uh, actually, my mom's uh -huh. plan, uh -huh. uh, but then because of some issues, uh -huh. because she got uh, an offer to further oh, the study, okay. but then we got some issue, then to stay in So, Russia it's just to go overseas to study or to migrate? To study and bring all the family. Oh, but that's not... After uh, yeah. after finishing the study, you come back, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. That's different. But just for live there for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That I don't <laughs> mind. Not migrating yeah. purposes, yeah. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. live there for mm -hmm. a year or two. A lot of people wouldn't mind. Yeah, that migrating, part. no. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so why? Why haven't you, your family, haven't thought of making another country your home? Because we live in Malaysia. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's the why? point. Okay, so the question is, why do you love Malaysia? I would say it can be a lot of reasons. Mm. The people here, mm. the familiarity, mm. the environment, mm. and mm. even our previous generation also mm. live here and mm. we are familiar. Okay. Right? Well, are you concerned with corruption, mm -mm. with pollution, you know, in especially in Klang Valley, yeah. we get water supply disruption so often. Right. Mm, true. 
it, it's so frequent. You get water supply disruption, you get flash floods, you get mm -hmm. traffic jams, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's terrible. Remember the country has got a lot of political instability in the mm -hmm. last few years. So would it be better if you migrate to maybe say like Indonesia or something like that, right? Yeah, <laughs> true. But then, uh -huh. Uh -huh. in my opinion, that because I live in a very isolated mm -hmm. places in mm -hmm. Malaysia, so mm -hmm. it will be better for me. Mm -hmm. So I won't have to face some of like congestion mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. more water pollution. Air pollution. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So okay. that's the reason. Okay. But what, what I'm trying to understand is mm -mm. why is it that if you look at just Malaysia alone, mm -mm. most of the Malaysians who migrate are the non Malays. Mm -hmm. Most of them, mm -hmm. there are Malays who have migrated. Yeah. In fact, the number of Malays who are migrating has increased mm -mm. in the last in the last 15, 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. But still substantially most Malaysians who are migrating are the Chinese and then followed by the Indians. Mm -hmm. and so why is it that the, uh, the reason why I ask you is because from a Malay standpoint, mm -hmm. why is it that you guys don't have the motivation or don't even consider it as an option? Yeah. Yeah. True. So I guess, I think it's, maybe your options are a bit more limited because well, Malaysian Chinese, especially if you're educated, you got a degree and all that, you mm -hmm. can go to Australia, UK, Singapore, and all that, right? Yeah. So for you all, I, I think maybe the options for you all will be not so wide. Yes. But that still, you still haven't. You the, the still the point is why under because now Indonesia has progressed mm -hmm. a lot better than Malaysia. They got political stability. The economic growth is much better. Mm -hmm. They got uh, government that is progressing the country. And why don't we have the Malaysian Malays or the Malaysian Muslims migrating to Indonesia? I'm not asking <laughs> you to migrate. Yeah, because the whole topic <laughs> is why I'm not migrating. Ah, uh, yeah. So to 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 come back mm -mm. to what I'm trying to say this morning is this. I think the reason is because for a lot of the Malays, the, the Chinese and the Indians, immediately when they are not happy with their situation, mm -hmm. one of the immediate, one of the easiest options is migrate. Mm, I see. Right? But else for you all, no. Oh, you know, the option, right? Yeah. Okay, if I don't like the kampung, mm -hmm. then I change my kampung. True. So for... And then the fundamental question is why are the Chinese and the Indians and particularly in my case, uh, why is that option so easily available? I think it's a lot to do with the fact that for many people, I think those, especially those who migrated, they don't feel as if Malaysia is their home. Mm -hmm. So earlier you said, right, you yeah. don't think of your family, don't think of migration because it is your home. Yeah. You see it is your home. Yes. And one of the reasons why, one very important reason why, in fact, I think it's the most important reason why I'm still here. I mean, I'm 69. And just by the way, you know, today is my birthday. I'm exactly 69 today. I, why after 69 years, I'm still stuck. I'm still in this country, in a country called Malaysia, because it's my home. And I look at it in a very objective manner. Because uh, about 40 years ago in the 1980s, I was under a lot of pressure to migrate. I was under a lot of pressure to migrate to New Zealand or Australia. Yeah. Uh, my, my, uh, I'm divorced. My ex-wife uh, at that time was telling me, you know, there's no future in the country. Where to migrate? You know, um, a lot of my relatives have migrated to Australia. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends, my classmates have migrated to New Zealand and Australia. They seem to be doing better. Yeah. So why don't we follow them? <sighs> I said, no, no, no. I said, no, no. I, I, you know, I migrate, say, to New Zealand, to Australia. Then what do I do? Go and open up a restaurant. Go and drive a taxi. Right? Go and mm -hmm. open a laundry shop. I mean, would I want that kind of future? I said, no, I don't want that kind of future. Or like some of my friends who migrated to Australia, right? My old classmate, uh, Chinese, worked for a multinational in Australia. 
And you know, typical Asian, you're hardworking. Mm-hmm. And he was going to office even on Saturday and staying back in the office until late at night in the multinational in Sydney. Mm-hmm. And you know what his workmates, his colleagues, those who are the Caucasians, Australian, told him, his, his, his surname is Lim, told him, hey, Mr. Lim, don't work so hard. Mm-hmm. So my friend was <laughs> wondering, you know, what, what you kind know, of yeah. opinion is it? Uh-uh. Don't work so hard because when you work so hard, you make the rest of us look bad. You make the rest of us look lazy. So please go home. <laughs> that my, makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so my friend, of course, was so shocked. He said, oh gosh. <laughs> so in the end, he has no choice. In the end, he has to be lazier. Uh, uh, yeah. Start off. <laughs> Start off. Yeah. And then, uh, because our friends in New Zealand and uh, Australia as relatives, uh, you said, okay, that's discrimination in Malaysia. I think mm. that's discrimination in every country, yeah. right? even in Singapore. And those friends of mine who migrated uh, to Australia, New Zealand, they said that's a glass ceiling. You, you don't see it. It's not in the policy. It's not in like in the case of Malaysia, we have the new economic policy where there's so-called the affirmative discrimination, right? There, they tell you, no, we are equal opportunity. We are very free society, blah, blah, blah. But when you come down to the day-to-day, uh, because of certain things, you find that you cannot get promoted to the level that you're supposed to. Yeah. So there's the glass ceiling. It's still there. Uh, US, uh, UK, and some countries are worse. Some countries are not so bad, but it is still there. So I, I told my ex-wife at that point, I said, I think this is a country that uh, is worth this country means Malaysia is worth uh, making your home, it's worth fighting for. Mm-mm. So, uh, fast forward to now, right? That was 1980s. Fast forward to now. Uh, I think if I migrated in 1980s, I probably would be owning maybe two restaurants, you know, maybe in Sydney, Chinatown, uh-huh. and all kind of thing. And I don't think that's what life. That's the life that one that's not what home mm-hmm. it is. And I look at my relatives, my friends are there. They don't see the discrimination because partly because they have given up their Chinese-ness, they have given up their Asian-ness. Mm-hmm. They have to use a Western name. For example, you know, if I go there, when I every time I go to Australia. Uh, the people who meet me there, they'll call me, even up to now, mm-hmm. in UK and US, they'll call me Mr. Tang, Mr. Bu, Mr. Bu Tang, Mr. Bu Tan. None of them will call me correctly. Yeah. Right? Uh-uh. So, because the, the, the thing for them is, oh, it's so hard to remember your name. Mm-hmm. What? Your surname is not Bu, is it? Your surname mm-hmm. is Tan, is it? Oh, well, what name is Mr. Tang? Yeah? So, then, okay, I never mind to make it easy for me, to make it easy for me as the white Australian, I call you Robert. Lah. Mm-mm. <laughs> right? So Robert Tan. Lah. Now, then why is it that when I call them, when is it when I talk to them, I don't, I take the trouble of finding out their name is Scott Morrison. Mm-mm. I don't call you Morrison Scott. Mm-hmm. Correct? Yeah. I respect you and I learn what your surname is, how to address yeah. you. I don't go and say, oh, it's Scott Morrison. Are you Morrison Scott or what? Or Mr. Mr. Morrison, maybe I call you Mr. Tan you know, to make it easy for me. Right? So in this type of countries, in UK, because I got relatives who migrated to UK, uh, I've got people who got migrated to uh, America. I got a very old good friend of mine from Alostar who migrated husband and wife to the uh, US. I went to their house many years ago in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. So I call him the name that I used to call him when we were in Alostar. Mm. And then his American friends will be all together in his house, were all shocked. They ask him, what exactly is your name? Mm. And he was so embarrassed. Yeah. Because he has never encountered this before. How come suddenly this old friend of mine from Alostar calling me by my real name? Mm-hmm. And then when I'm in America, I'm called by another name. And he can't answer at all. So... He has given up his Malaysian-ness, he's given up mm. his Chinese-ness to 
make it easy for the other people. Yeah. I don't think that's a fair society. I don't think that's a good society. That is a very dominating society. That is a society that has got a very patronizing mindset. Now, in Malaysia, mm -hmm. everybody knows that Tan is my surname. Everybody knows that Tengbu is my name. Mm -hmm. And everybody respects, everybody calls me by that. Mm -hmm. Is that important? Yeah, if you look at it, on that alone, it may not seem to be important. Like, what's the big deal? Instead of calling you Tengbu, I call you Robert. What's the big deal? Mm -hmm. But if you look at it deeper, right? It's from this tiny kind of incident, this tiny kind of domination and cultural, I call it cultural colonization, right? You can link it to what the United States is doing to China now. The United States now is bullying China, is strangling China because of this cultural mindset that, look, China, you are a backward country, you cannot progress, you can only progress because you steal our technology, you copy our technology, and so on and so forth. You are actually a backward country. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, right? Because they don't respect me, I mean, in this case, right? Mm -hmm. As a different type of person with a different naming structure, which is mm -hmm. Tan Bu. Instead of, you know, I got a letter, uh, a few marketing letters from mm -hmm. America, right? Asking me, dear Mr. Boo, do you want to be a member of the Boo Society from America? Yeah. Because there's a society called the Boo Society. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just threw the letter away, but I was going to tell them, you know, you idiot. I'm not Mr. Boo, I'm Mr. Tan. Mm -hmm. I, Boo is not my surname. <laughs> that's the ignorance, that's the cultural ignorance that they have. It's okay to be ignorant. But when you're culturally ignorant, Right, or historical ignorance, and then you think you're superior, and then the others should follow you and be submissive to you. Oh. That is wrong, that is not respecting the other person as a human being. Totally agree. Yeah. Uh, that is Australia, mm -hmm. that is USA, that is UK. Mm -hmm. So why don't I love Malaysia? Because here I'm respected as a Chinese, I'm respected as a Malaysian. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And like I said, you may think that it's only a minor thing, but it can link up to a lot of other things. So that's why I always tell um, Malaysian people, you know, whoever it is, when you want to have a, a Western name, please think carefully. Mm -hmm. It's not just about uh, having a name that you like, you know, it's a lot about uh, mutual respect, respect at the society level and at the cultural level. Okay, that's one point. I don't get carried away because I can talk <laughs> okay. about this. Yeah. Uh, so, then come back to Malaysia. Why is it that I have not regretted, never regretted because mm -hmm. I have the money to migrate. I have the eligibility. I told you I'm licensed in Australia. I'm licensed in Singapore. I'm licensed in Hong Kong. I can migrate to any of these places. But Malaysia is still my home. I have got only one passport. I don't have any PR. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, you look at what happened recently in our our political instability, the change. I mean, the, 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 the stupid fourth, seventh prime minister of ours, you know, who is 96 years old mm -hmm. and who lost his deposit in the Langkawi election, right? <laughs> who created all this trouble, right? Mm -hmm. In uh, 2020, when he resigned, right? And then we have a lot of this instability in the last few years, mm -hmm. right? Now, to compare this, this period of instability in Malaysia has, you compare with the instability in UK. UK's political instability is worse than Malaysia. They have got changes in prime minister, their finance minister have changed five times. Right? And then the shortest prime minister UK has a least trust. 44 days. His, her, sorry, her finance minister, uh, Mr. Kwateng, who's from, I think, South Africa, the two of them introduced a policy that almost bankrupted the whole country. And now, the whole of the United Kingdom has got nationwide strikes. Strikes by train drivers, mm -hmm. strikes by ambulance drivers, mm -hmm. strikes by immigration officers, strikes by teachers, strikes by bus drivers. The worst wow. thing is strikes by nurses. The national health system in UK is about 100 over years old. 
This is the first time that the nurses in UK are on nationwide strike. So the whole country, I'm supposed to go to UK for a research trip in about 10 days' time. Mm -hmm. And I wrote to the people I'm supposed to meet in UK. I said, is it wise for me to go to UK now because all the disruption, the strike, yeah, sometimes says, yeah, you think it's better now, you better postpone your trip. Okay, that's one point. Mm -hmm. The political instability in UK and Malaysia, mm -hmm. the nationwide strikes, because the government has been changing and the policies are so bad. Compared with Malaysia, now what happened? We also have political instability. Mm -hmm. yeah. But a lot of us don't realize that our political structure has got its weaknesses, but it's got its strength. What is one of the strength? We have a constitutional monarchy. UK doesn't have a UK have a monarchy, but it's not constitutional. Right? UK's monarchy means that if you are born under Queen Elizabeth or King Charles, then therefore you automatically will be the next king or queen. Right? In Malaysia, no. Our monarchy system is very democratic. Every five years, the Malay rulers must have a meeting, right? Have a rulers' conference and vote. The governors from the four states, from Malacca, from Sarawak, from Penang, also attend the rulers' conference, but they're not eligible to be elected as the mm -hmm. Agong, the king. Right? Mm -hmm. So the sultans are eligible from Belize to Kedah to Johor and all that. Mm -hmm. So we have a democratic monarchy system. Mm -hmm. So that is that good? So if you look at recently, right, our present king, right? If you look at the election, Malaysia's election 2022, the results, you could argue, Perikatan would argue that they have the majority, mm -mm. right? Because yeah. they add up uh, Bersatu with PAS uh -uh. and a few people from Abno, they got simple majority, mm -mm. right? But then we have this extra level of check and balance, which is at the uh, our monarchy, mm -hmm. right? They must get his consent, right? So we have a king who is, I suppose, as far as we can see now, is wise. He says, look, I want a government not only who is able to command the majority, but that's inclusive. Mm -hmm. If you look at it narrowly, Perikatan could have had the simple majority, mm -hmm. but Perikatan does not form an inclusive government. Because it's only Bersatu and PAS. Mm -mm. Right? Yeah. Where else, on the current side, the current unity government, mm -hmm. you have UMNO, you have DAP, you have the Sabah side, you have the mm -hmm. Sarawak side, and you have Kadilan, mm -hmm. it is inclusive. Mm -hmm. That means you've got all the races represented. Yeah. Where else, under the Purikatan side, there's no, there's no Indian <laughs> member of parliament. And what is worrying, is that because PAS has got the most number of parliamentary seats, which is about, I think, 44, mm -hmm. they will be the main decision maker. Mm -hmm. Then what about the other religions? And you've oh. noticed since last year's election, PAS has been making a lot of, uh, whether it's in Kedah, say where they want, they want to ban lottery, mm -hmm. right? Or uh, in other states where certain things cannot be done based mm -hmm. on Islamic principles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what happened to the other communities? So had Perikatan become the government, mm -hmm. you would have a government that's not inclusive and policies that will create a lot of social unhappiness. True. But in the end, we have this unity government. Yes, it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it is perfect, right? The unity government has got people who shouldn't be inside there. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have proper, repre proper representation from different communities. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Because we have a monarchy system that is very democratic, that's able to elect a sultan that is better. Mm -hmm. And I think most people don't realize that the sultan of Para, mm -hmm. right, is highly qualified. I mean, I don't know, you can ask the audience, how many of y'all know that the Sultan of Para has got a PhD from Harvard University? Hey, it's not a PhD from 
um, local Malaysian you, you know, yeah. he's got a PhD from Harvard. Yeah. That's how highly qualified the Sultan of Para is. Yeah, right? Of course, <laughs> not every Sultan is like that, but yeah. just to show you that among the, the rulers, the Malay rulers, there's a good diversity. So as you go on a rotation basis, you're able to pick up uh, a good Sultan. And so far, I think over the years, we found out that all the kings that we've had, mm -hmm. all of them have been able to play a very statesman role. Mm -hmm. I can remember the time when Sultan Aslan of Para. Sultan Aslan was superbly qualified because before he became the king, he was Malaysia's Lord President. That means the highest in our judicial system. Mm -hmm. And at that time, our judicial system was very respected, very clean. And Sultan Aslan or Tunku Aslan at that time was highly respected. And he was our king. So you look at UK Britain, what happened to the monarchy? Yeah. Right. Uh, Prince Andrew, who is supposed to be associated with Harry Epstein. Mm -hmm. Who is Harry Epstein? Harry Epstein is the most famous child molester. He he loves to bring all the young pretty girls for sex and all that. And then all the powerful people like Prince Andrew are brought together. So that's one. Mm -hmm. right? And then the other prince, the one who married uh, a non-white. Mm -hmm. So because he married a non-white, right, Megan. Mm -hmm. So he has been ostracized by the British royal family because you married a non-white. You're not supposed to marry a non-white. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So you find that the whole structure that Malaysia has, we have to look at it in depth. We've got weaknesses, yes, but we've got strength. Like for example, this monarchy system that we have. Mm -hmm. So I look at things like that and I see that there's hope the possibilities for Malaysia. Malaysia is not an impossible uh, country. It's a country of possibilities. Mm -hmm. And then we need to fight for our freedom, for our rights. We need yeah. to strengthen whatever we have. Mm -hmm. True. All right? Sorry. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say something, is it? <laughs> that is true. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've heard the experience of discrimination of the name that uh, Tango experienced. So if you... Guys, also experience the same thing. Let us know, and and and, 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 and <laughs> before 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 I forget, because huh. I've been reading a lot. I, I read uh. a lot. Mm -hmm. At any time, I can read five books, six books. Now mm -hmm. I think I'm reading about ten books at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two books that I read. One is called Thirteen Eighty Six, by Professor Ali. Something he's from uh, Middle East, and then one is from by a Korean, uh, Park Yunhee. Both books are about the history of China and Middle East, mm -hmm. the Central Asia countries. Mm -hmm. And then because this is during the Ming Dynasty and so on and so forth, then uh, Malaysia or Malacca comes into play. So you find that from this uh, historical uh, tradition, the Malays, the Indians, the Chinese have been living very harmoniously in mm -hmm. Malaysia for a very long time. Very long time. Mm -hmm. So this 1386, that book by Professor Ali, because he's able to access the Hikayat, the Hikayat Tang Tua, the Hikayat, uh, all the Hikayats, and then the Sejarah Melayu. So the Malay archive shows that when before the Portuguese and the Spanish colonized Malacca, mm -hmm. they were treated like pirates by the mm -hmm. local Malays. Right? But the Indians and the Chinese were trading. We were really trading very peacefully with India, with China, mm -hmm. and of course the Indonesian archipelago. Right? Mm -hmm. So you find that this tradition of the major races living harmoniously and peacefully and respecting each other is a long established tradition. It's not just since Medica Day. It's been there for hundreds of years, if you want you go back even before the Malacca Sultanate. Malacca Sultanate is about 14th, 15th century. Go back to Langkasuka. Mm -hmm. Langkasuka is up in Kedah, where you have the Bujang Valley there, where the 
uh, Indian, the Buddhists and all that mm-hmm. settled in northern Malaysia at that mm-hmm. time. And there's no war. Mm-hmm. You know? So, what I'm trying to say is that the strength, one of the strengths of our tradition, mm-hmm. of all Malaysian history is that all the races, no matter what religions you come from, are able to live peacefully, mm-hmm. prosperously. And we must protect that. We must strengthen that because you don't see that in UK, you don't see that in Australia, you don't see that in America. Mm-hmm. I mean, now it's worsened by Donald Trump in the case of uh, America, it worsened by Joe Biden because mm-hmm. a lot of Asian Americans are attacked for no reason. Mm-hmm. Right? And in the case of Australia, the racial uh, tension is pretty high. Mm-hmm. So here we've got something that has really been built over centuries, hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. And we must, we meaning the Malaysians, wherever, whether you're a Malay, a Chinese or Indian, we must know this, we must remember it and make sure that not only do we preserve it, but develop it and strengthen it. Why is it that, you know, like for example, our office in KL, we got Next to office is an Indian temple. Opposite the Indian temple is a Chinese temple. And behind it is a Malay mosque. Can you find that in America, Australia, UK? No. I mean, Mm -hmm. you recently you read, right? In Sweden, Mm -hmm. uh, the politician from Denmark who went to the Swedish embassy or the Turkey embassy and burned the Quran in front of everybody, Mm -hmm. right? So that kind of things... Uh, we, we don't do that in Malaysia yeah. because we respect each other. We can see that we're different, mm-hmm. but we respect each other. So let's make sure that we protect that and stay back. Don't migrate. Whether it's you mm-hmm. yourself who is 69 years old like me or your children or your children's children, tell them this country is a beautiful, it's easily one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Not just in the physical sense. In the physical sense, a lot of forests have been chopped down. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. A lot of hills have been chopped down, so they're not so beautiful uh, anymore. Okay. But beautiful in terms of culture, mm-hmm. beautiful in terms of the people. Yeah. And I I travel a lot. I mean, I travel to... Uh, the only continent I've not traveled to is South America. Mm-hmm. I've been to Africa, I've been to Europe, I've been to Asia, of course, you know. Mm-hmm. And I find that at the end of the day, Malaysia is still the best country. It is still home. And we just had Chinese in here, right? Uh, uh, yeah. If you go to the shopping malls, mm-hmm. you can see whether it's KLCC, Mid Valley, they have beautiful Chinese New Year decorations. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. And then in front, I mean, a lot of them, they do it for commercial reasons uh, uh, because yes. they want it to be Instagram, right? Uh, uh, uh. And then you will find that all kinds of races, whether it's Malays, Chinese, Indians, will stand in front of the yes. Chinese New Year celebration and yeah. take photo. Yes. And then the same thing happened in Christmas. Mm-hmm. The same thing happened in uh, Hari, Raya. Hari Raya. Right. I don't see that in any other country. I don't see that in UK. I don't see that in Australia. I don't see that in America. So mm-hmm. why am I migrating to a country that is inferior to my country? Mm-hmm. Why am I migrating to Australia when it's inferior to Malaysia? True. So superficially, yes, there are a lot of weaknesses. Corruption, yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, and now, the traffic jam, the pollution, yes. But each and every country has got those problems. Uh, the point is that I think this country is worth, it's so beautiful that it is worth defending, it is worth fighting for. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So actually, we got a comment from Facebook, uh, Y Chun. Mm-hmm. Um, he's agreed with your point. No place is perfect. There are pros and cons for every place. The pros need to outweigh the cons by a lot of before deciding to up, uh, uproot. And uh, also mentioned that the grass is not always greener on the other side. What about the unprovoked violence against Asians in the US? Yeah, it's not just US. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so many countries, you know, and I think... It's important that Malaysians, as Malaysian as Malaysian as Malaysian as Asian, that we understand our history, mm-hmm. uh, we respect our culture, we respect our heritage, and make sure that the other side respect us as well, yeah. and not get bullied by them. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and then a comment from YouTube. Um, 
from Vince Lim. Okay. He uh, wishing you happy birthday, Mr. Tan. <laughs> Thank Those you. Those who had migrated, are there any regrets? If yes, what are some of the reasons quoted? Okay. <laughs> I talk to my friends. I talk to my relatives. Mm -hmm. You know, even my sister, my own sister migrated. Uh, superficially, they tell you they're happy, mm. right? But of course, they have to tell you that. Because they've been there for 30 years, 40 years. Mm -hmm. If they say, oh, God, I made a mistake, you know, that mm -hmm. it would be a huge admission of a failure and a mistake. So, but if you look at it deeper, you look at it, how they live, how their families live. They've given up, they've sacrificed, they've surrendered a lot of what is Chinese, uh, what a lot is Malaysian, uh, what is Asian to them. They've sacrificed those and incorporated a lot of, for example, if Australia, a lot of Australian values. Mm. If you're prepared to do that, fine. Mm -mm. But what I'm saying is that in Malaysia, I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. In Malaysia, I can be a Malaysian citizen mm -hmm. and I can still be having all my heritage, my values and so on. Mm -mm. I mean, this is a true story, right? Yeah. Uh, because I have an Australian company mm -hmm. in Sydney. So we, I meet with my directors. My directors are Caucasian Australian. So we're chit chatting, you know. Mm -hmm. So he was sharing with us his experience because he met this Indian guy, right? On the surface, doesn't look like an Indian, mm -hmm. but originally from India. Oh, okay. And the, the 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 story is this: this Indian migrant who is now an Australian mm -hmm. was so. Unhappy or so angry was so because my Australian director found out that originally this person, this one is from India, is an Indian. Mm -hmm. So this Indian friend of Indian, mm -hmm. quotation mark, Indian mm -hmm. friend of his, when he learned that this Australian director found out that his origin from India, mm -hmm. he was insulted, he was angry. Mm -hmm. I'm not Indian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How come? <laughs> That's why my yeah. Australian director was shocked. Uh -uh. I mean, look. You cannot, you cannot change the fact that you're yes. born an Indian. Yes. But he was embarrassed, he was insulted. Mm -hmm. And he showed his anger. Mm -hmm. So we were saying that, I mean, come on. You know, you want to migrate, fine. Yeah. But at what price, at what cost? Mm -hmm. Like my uncles, my friends, my relatives and all that. They, they don't have Asian values anymore. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want, fine. Mm -hmm. You know? Like... Uh, one of my staff, right? Uh, he has been in Australia for a long time, right? And he and his wife decided no, they want to come back because they want to bring out their children in the Asian way. They don't want to. If I can bring up my children, if I can bring up my family, if I can conduct my business in the, with Asian values, Chinese values, fine. But that is not acceptable. You know, like when I fill in my immigration card, right? I cannot even put my tongue in front. I have to put my tongue at the back. I said, why has it got to be like that? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's because that's their system. So what about my system? Yeah. So to answer Vince Lim's question, mm -hmm. yes. Superficially, they'll tell you, it's fine. The children got uh, good schooling and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Are you saying that those of us who stay back in Malaysia don't have good schooling? Yeah. Right. We have good schooling as <laughs> yes. well, Ma. Yeah. Right. And if you look at the cost of living, yeah, okay, recently you may complain that the cost of vegetables has gone up, mm -hmm. uh, so and so forth, but the cost of living in Malaysia is still super, super cheap. You know, uh, this person who came back from US recently went to see a skin specialist, went to see a dentist in KL. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't believe that for this type of quality, the dentist was damn good. The skin specialist was top class specialist. The medical consultation fee was so cheap. He, he just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. So after all that, we all need and, and a place. Yeah. <laughs> I have an Australian staff, I mean, uh, uh, who's migrated to Australia for a long mm -hmm. time. And when she came to Malaysia, she had to uh, use, because she was uh, not well and all that. So mm -hmm. she has to see the doctor here in Malaysia and all and so on. So she was saying, why are you complaining? Your medical, your healthcare system here is far better than the one in Australia. Yeah. They said, huh? Is it true? <laughs> you didn't know that? I said, yeah, in Australia, 
you know, it's horrible, it's expensive, and sometimes you've got to wait like eight hours, nine mm-hmm. hours, and so on. So the general experience I have is that uh, if you're prepared to give up mm-hmm. a lot, to give up a lot of your identity or who you are, what you want to be, then you will be happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but after one, two, three generations, I can tell you, your children, your children's children probably will not know where their ancestors came from. Mm-hmm. If you're prepared to give all that, fine. Mm-hmm. But in Malaysia, I don't have to. Mm-hmm. In Malaysia, I mean, yeah, I, I know the Chinese complaints, you know, they got racial discrimination, mm-hmm. NEP and all that. Mm-hmm. But look, we still have Chinese newspaper. We still have Chinese schools. Mm-hmm. We still have Chinese radio station. Chinese New Year is celebrated officially mm-hmm. throughout the whole country. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Can you get that in Australia? No. Can you get that in, uh, in UK? No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we really need a place to call home, like Malaysia. Yeah. yeah true. Yeah. And then uh, I just read some comment from Lao Ken Tun. Happy birthday, Tengbu. <laughs> Thanks. What, what worries me is the depreciation of our currency, hmm. which make all of us poorer in terms of purchasing power. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, you will have this. Uh, problems in every economy. I mean, the ringgit depreciated recently, not because the ringgit is weak. Uh, the previous finance minister, Tunku Zafo, was correct. Uh, the ringgit is weak because the US dollar is strong. The sterling has weakened a lot mm-hmm. against the US dollar. Mm-hmm. And if you are a Japanese citizen, it's worse off, right? Because mm-hmm. the Japanese yen in the last year, in around 2022, Plunge 50 over percent. Our ringgit is not so, in that sense, not so bad. Yeah. It went from 410, 420 to 470, 480. Mm-hmm. So that's about uh, 15, 18 percent. Mm-hmm. The yen plunged from 100 yen to about 150 over yen in less than one year. And the worst part with Japan is wages are not rising. Mm-hmm. So this recent round of ringgit weakening is across the board. Uh, Aussie dollar also weakened, sterling weakened, euro weakened, uh, even the Chinese renminbi also weakened. Right? Mm-hmm. So in that sense, it should be seen in its proper context. Mm-hmm. And it's really the, there is signs showing that the US dollar has topped up and that's why the ringgit has strengthened mm-hmm. from about 470 to about 430. Mm-hmm. Right? So in the longer term, whether the ringgit will weaken or strengthen depends on two things political stability and economics progress, mm-hmm. right? We have to ensure there is political stability and that political stability must lead to economic development. Mm-hmm. We have, once we have those two, then I can guarantee you the ringgit will stabilize or even mm-hmm. strengthen. Yeah, but right. to get those two, not easy. Mm-hmm. To get political stability and economic development, we have, we meaning Malaysia, Malaysians, whether Malay, Chinese, Indians, Ibans, Dayak, mm-hmm. have a lot, a lot of work to do. Yeah. Just pray for our economy and political stability. No, 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 don't just pray. Don't just pray. pray. <laughs> work for it. Pray yeah, is good. Yeah. Pray and work. <laughs> work hard for it. Okay, so I just read like one last um, question, comments from uh, the viewers. Mm. After some years of study and working in overseas, I mm. still like Malaysia the most. Uh, yeah. Who is that? That was from Kao Moon Chong. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so I, I mean, just just talking about that, right? Mm, yeah. When you travel, Mm-mm. when I travel abroad, I always have to bring with me a box of our local kopi, mm-hmm. our kopi, the black coffee. Mm-hmm. Because if I go to US, Australia, I cannot get our local coffee. I can only get the flavor of latte, but I want our local coffee. I cannot get it, mm-hmm. so I have to carry a box. Every time I go, so that I can drink our local coffee. Uh-uh. So we have a lot of freedom. Yeah. Because in Malaysia, I can have flat white, I can have a latte, mm-hmm. and I can have our local coffee. Mm-hmm. But if you go to New York, you go to Sydney, you can have flat white and latte, but mm-hmm. you cannot have Malaysian coffee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in that sense, we have got more choices than them. True. Yeah. And actually, there's a lot of people wishing you happy birthday. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I sure. But... <laughs> We we have the Facebook live not because of the birthday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, uh, so um. I I I think. 
uh, the, the, the narrative mm -hmm. for the non-Malays, Malaysian, in the last 20, 30 years has been because of the new economic policy. Mm -hmm. right? That uh, I'm, I'm 69 years old, so I know the different phases that Malaysia's economy has to go through. Mm -hmm. The new economic policy was launched uh, with good intentions, but implementation was badly done in the 70s because I experienced it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is partly because of people like the seven, the fourth prime minister, because he was very, he together with people like uh, Musaitam and so on were known as the ultras. Mm -hmm. So they were very extremist, right? And they push the implementation of NEP very aggressively. It's almost like nationalization. Mm -hmm. So because I'm from Kedah, mm -hmm. right, so I have a lot of friends where their families have got uh, businesses, rice mill, rice milling. Mm -hmm. They got uh, Kelang Baras. Ah. Right? Mm -hmm. So when the NEP came, so NEP, they set up the LPN, uh, Ladang, LPN stands for what? <laughs> it's the the rice body, uh -huh. you know, uh, beras, uh, ladang beras uh -huh. or something like that. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. So the government set that up, and then because the rice mills were owned mainly by the Chinese, mm -hmm. and then to comply with the NEP, so what the government did was very aggressively nationalize all the rice mills. Mm -hmm. In other words, I buy, I force and take over from you, mm -hmm. and then put it under LPN. Mm -hmm. uh, that was. I blame it on those ultras led by the fourth prime minister, who was, I think, that time minister of trade or deputy prime minister. Mm, okay. it, you can achieve your objective, but you can do it in a in a fairer way, mm -hmm. in a way that would not alienate an important segment of your community. Yeah. yeah. So, in that seventies, NEP was done in a very bad way, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of damaging consequences on the Malaysian economy, which we suffered in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And then when the huge, uh, it's not a recession, 1985 was a depression. It was Singapore and Malaysia's depression when our economy was so badly hit, right? both Malaysia and Singapore, the Singapore stock market, the Malaysian stock market, because the situation was so severe, the two stock markets had to be closed for three days, suspended for three days. Never happened before. But because the crisis was so severe, so then when this crisis broke out, then the fourth prime minister, whom I still think that even at, his, at the age that he is now, he's still an idiot, right? Finally learned that, look, the way you did your NEP was destroying the economy. Mm -hmm. Finally, in 86, 87, they decided to relax. Mm -hmm. Industrial Coordination Act was launched at that time. Any company that's got the paid up of more than two million ringgit must get licensing from the government. Mm. And to get your license, you must have 30% booming putra, blah, 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 blah. Right? After that, they relax the requirement. Mm. Otherwise, the foreign investors wouldn't come in. Yeah. So over the years, if you compare the 1970s and now, right? 1970 was, 1970s and the mid-80s were the peak of this NEP. Mm -hmm. Since then, the government has softened a lot because they realized that policies based on this kind of, even though you call it affirmative discrimination, destroys the economy. Mm -hmm. You, NEP is trying to distribute the cake. It's trying to cut out the cake mm -hmm. more equally. Mm -hmm. But in the process of cutting out the cake more equally, you shrink the size of the cake. Mm -hmm. That's why the yeah. economy shrank. Mm -hmm. So they realized that no, the government realized that no, you must expand the cake first. Then only you talk about mm -mm. equal distribution. So now the policies have relaxed a lot. So that's why uh, it's a lot easier now. Now meaning in the last 10, 15 years, a lot easier now than compared with the 70s and the 80s. I, in the 1984, I mean, I went, I came down to KL to be a stockbroker mm -hmm. because I wanted to open my own stockbroking company. Mm -hmm. I was very interested, right? So when I came down to KL from Alostar, the government's policy was, you want to have a stockbroking company, you must have 30% booming Putra shareholder. Mm -hmm. Well, now, you know, after I qualified, two mm -hmm. years later, I qualified to be a stockbroker. 
you know what our finance minister Daim said uh, oh now you want stop booking license you must have 70% booming go try mm. hey bloody hell mm. I came in yeah. 30% okay lah you know but it can still tahan tahan right now I got the 70% mm. booming putra shareholder and then the booming putra shareholder wants all free shares huh? no tak mau bayar don't mm-hmm. want to pay huh? mm-hmm. of course I cannot be a stock broker Do we, can we have this now? No. So in that sense, there is a progress that Malaysia has made, which is uh, not recognized, which is silent. But we have progress, and I think uh, the more we speak up, the more we fight for mm-hmm. equal rights and so on mm-hmm. and so forth. I think the better Malaysia will be. Yeah. So I want to share this because this experience of mine is uh, quite unique, and I've never, mm. I've never disclosed this experience before. <laughs> a good. A good words from Tengu to wrap up our live session for today. And do you have anything last word to say? Ah, uh, like <laughs> I said, you know, this this country is is we are blessed lah. We are yeah. we are blessed. Yeah, that's true. The fact that we have no natural disaster, everybody knows, right? Mm-hmm. The only thing we can complain is flash floods, mm-hmm. right? The flash flash floods also not created by nature. The flash floods created by corruption. <laughs> Politicians are corrupted. DBKR is corrupted. Municipal council is corrupted. So if you tackle corruption, the flash floods will go away, right? I mean, not all, mm. but most of it is due to corruption and mm. lousy planning, right? Yeah. So we natural disaster wise, we are really blessed, right? In terms of culture, in terms of uh, diversity, we are again blessed. You know, here you can have people who can speak. Three languages, four languages, easily, yeah. easily. Yeah. It's no big deal, <laughs> and they are exposed to accept differences. Mm-hmm. Your child is brought up, is learned, is taught to accept differences. Mm-hmm. Of course, there are certain segments of our community that seems to be going backwards. Mm-hmm. That seems to want only the Malaysian society to only behave in a certain way. So we have to speak up, mm-hmm. we have to make sure that our voices are heard. That yes. whatever assets that we have, we must protect it and strengthen it. Yeah. So it's worth fighting for. Yes, it's true. We need to work hard for a better Malaysia. <laughs> so thank you so much, guys, for watching and enjoying our live session. And again, don't forget to follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel, Capital Dynamics, so that you and won't miss. Also, don't forget, yeah. please, any topics that you yes. like us to discuss or any topics that you want me to comment on, mm-hmm. you know, please. Share with us, right? Uh, we'll be more than happy to to to, to take be, it live. Yes, yeah? <laughs> sure. And actually, before I end, uh, we got a lot of requests for the links for the live session. Actually, so I just I would suggest that you guys turn on the notification on Facebook and also YouTube so that you won't miss our live session. No, oh, you mean they don't yeah. get the links? Yeah, they request for the links. Okay. So it was the same link for mm. every week. Okay? okay. So just turn on the notification. So, mm. and as mentioned, if you have any suggestion, so let us know so that we can cover in our upcoming live session. So happy weekend, everyone! Thank you for watching. Okay. Bye bye.